such event is very much uh, a manifestation of the kind of thing we want to achieve through our information code. To my mind, the recent parliamentary election in India, or the watershed movement, or at least can turn out to be a watershed movement in Indian history. So not only <laughs> there was an electoral rout, and not only that the regime has changed, but it is possible that the conception of what makes India a nation may have changed. This can not only pose um, economic challenges, but some social challenges for years to come. And I think it's uh, time has come for us to assess, uh, or at least uh, find an explanation for the electoral rub, and also what are the implications for the future. The growth was pretty healthy, poverty was going down, and even during the last two years when the uh, growth has slowed down, the poverty decline was uh, 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 happening at a reasonable rate. Then what is it? that uh, is it? Is it that people were uh, really uh, spooked by the what they read in the business pages of the newspapers? Was it just the leadership vacuum that was created? Was it the corruption scandals? Or is it simply inevitable that for emerging economies, for the societies which are slowly gathering economic strength, it's inevitable that uh, a large segment of the population really yearns for sort of muscular national, uh, cultural nationalism. Now it's also possible, it is a question of uh, frustrated aspirations, that aspirations where we're rising during the years of fast growth. One I think is just there was some sense that now finally we've arrived and then that was taken away. And I think then you look for what's wrong and once you start looking for them it's very easy to find things that are wrong. There were many things that are wrong. There was clearly a government that was very much uh, sort of reluctant to take hard decisions and pervasive sense that you know, we are constantly battling to uh, get what we are supposed to be entitled to. I think it's the mapping from the corruption in the newspaper to the corruption in everyday life. Incumbency carries a certain cost. And this was, uh, this was a party that had been in the face of the government for 10 whole years. I think we underestimated our costs, how much these things were magnified by the essential nature of the UPA. Uh, and here I'm speaking of, of dynasty. A dynast is useful so long as he helps provincial politicians win elections. Because otherwise you obviously an obstruction because the top job is always uh, not up for grabs. The dynasty had got to a stage where it didn't even believe that governing experience was important for the purposes of national projection. So I think without wanting to refine too much on it, this was an election in which one party effectively didn't turn up. What would be your advice for the new government to um, reclaim the confidence. Impunity is not acceptable and rights is not. I think the BJP and the UPA and anybody else will eventually have to do. I think the UPA sensed that. In fact, it did a whole bunch of stuff. If you look at the number of landmark legislations that happened, the, you know, the Right to Information Act, the National Green Tri Tribunal, the, the Right to Education Act, the, the, the Right to Food Act, and I think many of these were intended to change the relationship of the citizen with the state. And they, they will, in the long run, they will. This was important. This, in many ways, immediately created a bunch of roadblocks. They have resentments, the business community doesn't like them, um, and many other people don't like them, sometimes for good reason. But it, it's, I think it's a way, it, it creates a landscape which is very different from the landscape of 15 years. It seems to me there are two things, right? One is you can have a badly designed legislation. But there are a lot of other things where you can have a perfectly designed legislation. And the implementation is bad. The institutional structure through which things are implemented has been corroded to some extent. So what is a possible solution? They make the system work or we can give up on it and do something piecemeal. Both will be better than the current situation, which is to pretend that the idealized system exists because we are spending money on it. This conversation of right to health. 
this is the, not happened. It's an insane idea. I mean, it's an insane idea not because people shouldn't have a right to help, but what it means is it immediately needs a government delivering help. The system is completely collapsing. It's collapsing basically because nobody is interested in it. Everybody's checked out, so the doctors don't show up because the patients don't show up. Take the political will to to punish these people is completely implementable. The technology exists now of monitoring. I think the question of sanctions that Orji is speaking about seems to me, at least from the point of view of the BJP government, low hanging fruit. The most popular one would be to hold uh, government school teachers to act to, to account. Whether they have the political will to do this is another, is another matter. But certainly, we could test out whether the notion of state education. The NDA government could actually test whether the notion of state-funded pub public education is workable given political will. And if it isn't, then we can move on to, uh, you know, uh, uh, to other models. The key thing that uh, differentiates uh, BJP uh, and Congress is really the uh, kind of cultural nationalism. In peacetime, uh, this kind of cultural nationalism. Uh, does it have any play? Does it have any function? Diversity is a diversity is a social condition, but pluralism is a political choice. It would be, uh, you know, uh, unwise to ignore the fact that, uh, despite the Congress's uh, complete uh, political disintegration and decay, despite its cynicism and opportunism, in some uh, residual reptilian way, it stood for. Uh, a kind of pluralist nationalism. So if India is this uh, is this jungle, the Congress is a human zoo. The Congress recognizes that you can't fit Bharat Mata into petticoats meant for smaller European women. The BJP has to decide, the Soviet government has to decide whether, uh, despite its rhetoric about Sabka Vikas, whether it's going to be the Karta of a Hindu undivided family, or whether its metaphor for India is more expansive than that.